um, see the numbers, but that's just, you know, uh, communication, telecommunication. Um, All right, that was the moment Mission Control lost communication with a lunar lander yesterday. Its altitude and speed abruptly dropped to zero with more than a minute to go before its scheduled touchdown on the moon's surface. The fate of the spacecraft designed by the Japanese company iSpace is still unclear at this hour. I want to bring in CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, so uh, just, Bill, take us back. Uh, what was this mission? Uh, what were the Japanese trying to accomplish? And what's the update at this hour? You know, iSpace, this Jap it's headquartered in Japan. They have offices in the U.S. and Luxembourg. You know, they launched their initial lander to the moon back in 2023. Uh, but they had some sort of a malfunction, and it crashed to the surface in what they called a hard landing, what you or I would call a crash landing. Uh, they took the lessons learned from that mission. They put them into this second flight with a vehicle called Resilience. Uh, and something very similar happened. It was descending. Everything was normal. And at about the last data they received showed an altitude of about 600 feet. And it was descending faster than it should have been at that altitude. And the presumption is... Uh, the engine had either cut off or lowered its thrust, and so the vehicle fell to the surface again with a hard landing, and they declared the mission over uh, later in the night, uh, classifying it as a, as a failure. So it's a, it's a big blow for iSpace. That's two in a row for them. They have other missions they plan to send to the moon, uh, but, you know, that's going to be a challenge uh, coming off the, the back of two failures in a row. So uh, let me ask you uh, about this uh, threat by Elon Musk to terminate contracts with the U.S. government on his Dragon spacecraft, which is, of course, widely used by NASA. It's how we get people from the ISS uh, and back to Earth. Uh, he sort of walked it back. But what's your take on all of this? You know, th th this, this explosion yesterday between uh, the president and Elon Musk uh, really caught everybody off guard. And if you cover the space program, you know, you're very familiar with the way Musk works and the way he uses his platform X to get his ideas across very briskly sometimes. Uh, but threatening to decommission the Dragons would be a gigantic blow to the American space program. I mean, you can't really overstate it. Uh, we'd have no way to launch astronauts other than buying seats on Russian Soyuz like NASA used to do. But, you know, the thing to keep in mind here is SpaceX cannot unilaterally cancel these government contracts. They signed them. There would be severe penalties on SpaceX financially um, if they pulled out of any of these contracts. So, uh, as you said, uh, Musk later walked it back and said he would not decommission the Dragons. Um, and I think that's, you know, wiser heads prevailed. And maybe it was in the cool of the moment uh, that he walked that back because I, it would be a huge blow against SpaceX. It'd be a huge blow against the American space program. It just doesn't work on either side of that argument. Excellent, uh, excellent analysis, as always, from Bill Harwood. Thanks for joining us, Bill.